All right, this is Boxing with the Truth. I am the Truth. Today is March 15th, 2016. And today we have with us Sharif the Lion Bogare. How you doing today? I'm doing good, sir. Thanks for inviting me on your radio. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you taking time to uh, do the interview. I know you're a very busy guy right now. You just had a big announcement uh, last week, and we're going to talk about that soon. Um, first, I want to get some of the fans uh, up to speed on who you are, uh, where you came from, and what you're going to be doing in your career. So, um, you actually fight at lightweight. Uh, your pro record is 27 wins, 19 knockouts, and one loss. Um, you're originally from uh, Uganda, and uh, you're age 27, correct? Yes, sir. All that right. Okay, now, originally, you came over here from Uganda at 18. So, I know your boxing kind of started back earlier than that in Uganda. Can you take me back there and tell me about um, growing up in Uganda and your boxing over there? Um, I started boxing at the age of 8, back in 1997. Boxing, I started it as a, a sort of defense, I would say, like causing the streets. We used to do it. We used to fight a lot. We were kids, kids in Africa, they fight a lot. But we started like a little hobby to know how to fight. We used to come up together with a lot of kids and we start sparring each other. We could take off our shirts and box one another. So among the group, I was one of the best. A friend of mine who was like our leader, he took me to a boxing gym. He pushed me inside the gym. He never got inside himself. He was scared. So when I got in there with a friend of mine, they were, we were two, they asked us, what do you guys want here? We said we came here to box, and they told us to take off our shirts and start shadow boxing. Then from now on, on people liked us, and when they saw us, like we had a little bit talent and skill already because we were doing in the streets already. So when we went there, we spied a couple of kids who were already in the boxing gym, and uh, we did good. And my other friend ended up quitting, and I ended up loving the gym. And the, the way they treated me, they treated me like one of their own. And from now on, I developed the love of boxing and ended up going to competitions all the way to the top, becoming the national champion. Then started representing for my country. And uh, in 2007, ended up coming here and turned professional in 2008. Okay, and I want to touch on that a little bit. Actually, in the amateurs, um, I think you're kind of being uh, humbled a little bit. You, you actually were a five-time African champion and the captain of the Ugandan uh, national boxing team, right? Yes, sir. And your, your amateur record actually was 68 wins with four losses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you came here. Where did, where did you come to first when you first came here? Was that Chicago? Yeah, we came to Chicago, then from there I came to Las Vegas. Okay, and I know, I've heard that you got quite a big um, fan base in Las Vegas, in Chicago, and in Pittsburgh, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and what some people might not know is actually you tried a little bit of kickboxing and gymnastics as well, right? Oh, of course, you know, I started uh, with, back home, most of the African kids started with soccer. I started with soccer, then I went to gymnastic then I did a little bit kickboxing then I ended up we did kickboxing actually in the streets as well you know we did it in the streets then boxing then from there ended up on the boxing gym and I fell in love with boxing okay so let me now I've seen one of your entrances before and I know a lot of other people have and you're a pretty humble guy actually but you like to do a flamboyant kind of ring entrance where you come out in a big cage guys are carrying you on their shoulders um, you got the big uh, a real lion on top of your head um, how did all that get started and he was like, you should Africa, you can do something, you know, you can bring a lion, you know. It started like a joke, and like a lion, you know, how gonna get a lion? Well, I like, can't get it. We ended up getting that lion, and uh, ended up doing that show, and actually people ended up liking it. And uh, he, he was people talking, people keep talking about it, they love it. You know, something different, it becomes more realistic in boxing, you know. Okay. Not only people come to watch fights, but 
the enjoyment and excitement. You know, people will start to be like, that guy is crazy, man. They come with a dead line on his head, you know? <laughs> they don't know what I'm doing, but still people are going to, you know, people are going to judge and some people are going to laugh about it, people are going to like it, you know, something different. You know, we always have an ordinary ring interest for Batman, you know? We like to entertain fans, you know, they pay their money to for excitement, to watch fights, you know? Not only that we just put that show, but we call that put on a great show, we fight. When I go in there, I fight. You know? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think the lion fits you well because you got the killer instinct. When you see a guy's in trouble, you get him out of there. Oh, of course. You know, a lot of fighters, you know, if you got that, you can get the killer in you, you know. You have to take that opportunity because if you don't, no way, he's going to do it to you. So, you know, since I got the lion in me and, uh, you know, I got my lion thing, it makes me more hungry, you know. So do you have any superstitions or rituals or habits that you have to do before a fight? Oh no, I always, you know, put my trust in God. I always pray, you know, I always pray to God and uh, ask Him to protect me and uh, protect my opponent as well, not to get really injured, you know. Get him out. If I'm a knock him out, I knock him out and uh, he, comes, he comes back healthy, you know. We like, you know, we like enemies, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we are all looking for the same thing. We're looking to feed our families and we're looking to live a better life in this life, you know? Okay. So now tell me an activity outside of boxing that you enjoy doing that has nothing to do with the sport. Uh, I like, you know, to work out with the little kids, you know. Like, actually, right now, I just left, like, you know, we were supposed to talk a little bit earlier on and I told you I was going to have a class. I had some kids that I had to go work out with uh, you know, I like to show kids, you know, boxing. I like to teach them boxing. And apart from that, I spend most of my time, you know, in the mosque. I go and read, you know, learn about my religion and stuff like that. I learn about life, you know. Okay. So do you have a favorite boxing movie? Um, yeah, the Rocky movies, they used to hype me up as a kid. The Rocky movies. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, they were really, you know, <laughs> that's that's good. They put him in actually in the Hall of Fame, you know. He, you, his movies was, you know, they did some great job on my upcoming. So if you, a kid. if you weren't a professional boxer, what do you think you'd be doing with your life? Uh, school, and after school, probably businessman. God knows best, <laughs> you know. God is the, the one who is destiny, destiny, you know. Okay. Now, are you? Uh, is your trainer still Kenny Adams? Yes, sir, I'm still with Kenny. So tell me what and, Kenny. Uh, I, we have another assistant right now. Another assistant trainer is called Brandon Woods. So what does Kenny mean to you in your career? Oh, well, Kenny. You know, I've been Kenny now almost seven years with him, and uh, he knows my weaknesses now. He knows my mistakes, and uh, actually, I'll give. Him I would like to send this advice to my fellow fighters, you know, keep changing trainers back and forth. It doesn't really help you that much because you need sometimes to stay with one trainer. Who's going to learn you? Who's going to see your weaknesses? Who's going to know how you play the job? Who's going to try to show you to teach you how to affect that punch, you know? But if you keep changing trainers back and forth, you always like something new in the assets and they're going to try to build you up with it, you know? But, uh, being with Kenny, Kenny has been there. He has made like over 26 world champions. He has experience, and uh, I like his teaching. He, he teaches boxing really good. Mm-hmm. Even though he's a tough, tough guy, some people, a lot of shadows come and go, but I still stick with him because I know the good he has. But uh, he is a good player. Okay. Well, listen, I want to get to your big announcement that just came out this past week. I know that was a huge deal for you. It's a big deal for boxing, and it's a big deal for Mayweather Promotions. Um, you are uh, Mayweather Promotions and Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s newest member to the money team, correct? Yes, so tell me, how does that feel to, to look back all those years earlier in Uganda and, and being a kid on the streets there and fighting to survive to now be with May, Mayweather Promotions on the top? Uh, first of all, you know, I'd like to thank God. You know, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity and the process that we always push And I would like to thank my son of Canada as well, getting to do the big job for me. We just wanted to do another deal, but uh, 
do that at another deal, buy me the deal, I can do the math, and uh, we have to look somewhere else. When we went to Mary, uh, he was more than happy to have that. And uh, I'm so thankful to have Mary with a hand on that and to be part of Money Team because he's the one that has to cut the mirrors out there and staying busy. And I'm pretty sure he's going to keep me busy and he's going to give me some good sauce there that are going to make me shine. Okay, and speaking of that, I've heard that it's possible that he might even have you lined up for a title fight be before the end of the year. Is that true? Um, Kaz, I'm ready. I've been there already. I've had the experience. I've already got a fight So it's nothing new. I'm just in the first game in the gym. I'm ready, you know. Even though we missed my next fight, we're going to try to do it Okay, well, I want to bring up two guys that are actually holding titles right now in your division and see what you what you think about this. Um, are you familiar with uh, Ismail Barusa, or Barossa? Uh, I'm not I think Well, he's the WBA world lightweight uh, title holder right now. And then you have Rancis Bartholomew, who is the IBF world light heavyweight or uh, the lightweight title holder. Are you familiar with him? Yeah, I think the guy we mentioned, I think, uh, is supposed to be one of them from England. Those two guys, two guys win one of them, then another, I think he's like Herrera. Then have Dalu B. O. Renata and has Dalu B. O. Then George Herrera and Maris have a Dalu B. C. But then he has an idea. Well, listen, I want to um, congratulate you for getting signed with Maple Other Promotions. I think uh, you're going to do big things with uh, Floyd. I mean, you only have one loss, and if anybody follows boxing, they understand that really you should be undefeated because you lost that because you actually had an injury, correct? Yes, sir. So, I mean, you should be undefeated right now. Floyd likes undefeated guys. Uh, he likes aggressive guys. And if anybody's seen you fight, you come in, a, you have a very aggressive style. You finish your opponents. Uh, you'll stand in the box. You'll bang with them. You'll stand on the outside and fight them. Uh, I think you're a very exciting fighter. You're a very humble guy. Uh, you actually were the WBO, NABO lightweight uh, champion. And I think uh, you're going to have more titles in your future. Oh, yeah, I'm really excited. You know, first of all, you know, I'd like to thank, you know, God and, and then thank me with the promotion and never the himself for taking me in. I'm ready to put on some great shows for the fan. You know, that's all, you know, people pay money to see great shows. The lion is ready. The lion is ready to be uncaged. You know, I'm ready to be uncaged and put on great shows. This is what we do. We love it. Nobody forces us to fight. We just love this game. We love it. We, you know, boxing, boxing is like a drug. We love this game. I'm ready to step it up under money team floating over the promotion. So is there a date um, coming soon that the fans will know about? Do you, do you have a fight lined up yet with uh, Mayweather Promotions? Uh, nothing for now, but we're just waiting for within within a couple of weeks we'll be able to know the date. All right. Well, I think that's going to be great for you, great for Mayweather Promotions, and great for the boxing fans. I can't wait to see you back in the ring. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to Asia, you know, I can't wait. Well, listen, would you like to say anything to your fans? Oh, yeah, you know, I always, you know, I always like to leave a good message behind my fans. And uh, whoever listening to the to, to me right now, may God bless you and your families. And may God keep you in good health always, you know. And thanks for always supporting your boys with the lion. You guys can follow me on Facebook. Sharif the Lion Bulgari on my Instagram at Bulgari Sharif. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. And thank you so much for bringing me on your radio, sir. God bless you as well. And God bless you. The truth has spoken.